Welcome back and welcome to St Andrews, one of my favourite places in the whole world. And importantly for this video, as of yesterday, this became home to my most recent sculpture installation. The historic town of St Andrews is the world-renowned home of golf and home to the third oldest university in the English-speaking world, dating back to 1412. This castle lying on the edge of the town on a rocky promontory dates back to the 12th century. Turn the clock back four months and I was preparing work for Chelsea Flower Show and that was to be my one and only exhibition planned for this year. Of course at that time none of us knew that it would later be cancelled and I wanted to create something very special. I wanted to create a sculpture suited to a smaller garden or indeed an indoor space. I'm taking absolutely no chances with this piece and start by making sure that everything is level and secure. My plan was to make a vase around by stacking hundreds of pieces of slate showing off a variety of the plethora of colours that slate is found in. These different slates are chosen for their colour and for their texture, they're all very smooth and I want this piece to be very precise so I should be able to stack them very tightly together. I begin by shaping circles which change ever so slightly in size to create the first few layers. After shaping these first few layers and stacking them in reverse so that I can see what I'm doing more easily, I then flip them over and remove any lumps and bumps with the grinder so that they will sit nicely together. I then create arcs and the colours can be mixed as these pieces are stacked. The variety of colours in some way emphasises the texture and fabric like appearance of the surface. As the sculpture begins to grow, I use these wooden supports to add strength and avoid any disasters.
I'm hard to read. I thought of you, hoping that the ripples would make you notice me, notice me. And now you're here, sunlight on the ripples. Somehow you. When the curve eventually reaches a point where it becomes vertical, I turn the corner and begin to form the neck of the urn. With a sculpture being small and really fine, one or two hammer blows could really change the look of this piece. So I'm being really careful when I'm making this part of the sculpture. Of course, as this vase nears completion, it was still in my mind at that time that it would go on to be an exhibition piece. Six weeks later, that exhibition was unfortunately cancelled. Every cloud has a silver lining, and in this case, an old client and friend, John, walked into the workshop and fell in love with this piece, and I am going to install it in his wonderful garden in St Andrews. I'm lucky enough already to have work in this garden, having met John for the first time a way back in 2007 at the Royal Highland Show. Since then I've been fortunate that he's introduced my work to some of his friends and acquaintances who have gone on to commission their own pieces. Slate vase is going to sit on top of this piece of slate here which has been supplied by a local stonemason, Ross Watson. This is a piece of Welsh slate, in fact it's the very same slate that's been used to build this sculpture, just in a different format, so this is going to tie in really well. I'm going to secure the vase in place with a piece of stainless steel. Now the vase weighs about 100 kilos, so it's really important that it's secured really well and it's nice and safe. In order to fasten it to this piece of stone, I'm going to drill one hole through from the top and a larger hole halfway through from the bottom in order to accommodate a stainless steel nut. This is the stainless steel threaded bar that I'm going to use and these are the lock nuts that go in the end that are going to secure the iron in place. In order to drill the hole I'm just going to use this 
drill bit which is a 20mm diamond encrusted bit and a tungsten carbide bit to drill back up from the bottom. Now I've marked the centre out here, X marks the spot and I've left these lines about 20mm long which corresponds to the size of drill that I'm using. If I hit the edges of these lines then I know I'm in the centre of the piece of stone. Now that I've started drilling the hole and the drill seated properly, I'm going to use some water just so that I get a better cut. That's me got the first part of the core out, it's come out in two pieces and that's got me down through the first slab. So now I'm just going to flip it over and drill through from the other side. So this is the slate core that I've just taken out of this slab and although slate's incredibly hard, if you do have the right tool for the job it is really easy to get a really neat cut. Now I'm going to flip the piece of stone over again and fit the metal bar. So now that I've drilled these two holes I can push this bar through here and the nut will sit in this other hole and be accommodated nicely so that the slab can sit tight against the ground. I love coming back to revisit work, even if it's only a short time after installation, things seem to nestle in very quickly and you appreciate everything with a fresh perspective. I really think this sculpture fits in really well here and it's great to have another sculpture in such a wonderful garden here in St Andrews. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do me a huge favour, give it a massive thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. Wherever you are in the world, take care and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Think about me because I'm starting to doubt we will find a way back to each other when you're on the other side of the world. I'm here and I'm